What was once a 12-point Kent State lead is now just four. Well, there you see Jarrell Cancer turned his head and Bo Calhoun, the great dish out. At that time, Franco House, one big fella to another. Great use of the bounce pass. And lo and behold, deja vu all over again. Ball State has cut away at this lead down to four points. And Kellen Thomas back in this game, Joel, for Kent State cannot underestimate just how important he's been. We talked a lot about Jimmy Hall, but that run for Ball State happened while Thomas was on the bench as well. Hall remains on the bench with four fouls. Rob Senderoff will not gamble with his first team all-conference performer. And can Smith do the job keeping Thomas out of the paint? Well, he hasn't touched the ball since bringing it up. And Spicer has it poked free. Pollard jacks it up with one. That is a huge dagger. As the shot clock expired, first bucket of the half for Xavier Pollard. And again, just a simple thing, but it was Ortiz with the hustle play and peace of mind to save that ball and a fortuitous landing into the hands of Pollard. And now right back to seven is Kent State's lead. Ball State with the freshman going to work. Little touch for Moses. Look, he's capable. If you're not going to bring a double team, Trey Moses can make some of those baskets in the paint area. Cancer out, Edwin in to guard Weber on the defensive end. Pollard was trying to break down Weber there on the offensive side. And this is the matchup right here. Thomas almost lost his handle. Smith the pressure. Again, the shot clock down. Pollard the step back. He has taken control. Five straight points for Xavier Pollard with a grand total of six seconds on the shot clock. Such a tough cover for Ryan Weber. Foul is a moving screen. Franco House. That is his second. And all of a sudden, what was a four-point game, Rob Senderoff burns a timeout. Now, his team's back up, 51-44. You've got a nice cushion. You've got the basketball. Hump a little bit receded. Yeah, and boy, it's been a little. Remember the steal by Spicer that led to the three? That time it was Ortiz saving it out of bounds. Pollard the three with one on the shot clock. So some clutch plays by Kent State. Weber's foul is Ball State's third. It's the second on Weber individually. 33, Ryan Weber with the Ball State personal foul. Weber will go out. Zero for I'll tell you, it's, you know, tough. You think about Ryan Weber, as much as he moves in and out of screens on the offensive end and then having to guard a guy like Pollard, you know, that'll wear you out. Seven-point lead for Kent State. Kellen Thomas has not scored in the second half. Guarded by Kiapwe. Fights through the screen. Thomas still into the paint. Shot altered. The putback by Spicer is out. Down low house. Big block by Spicer. It will stay with Ball State. Kalik Spicer called out by Rob Senderoff before the game. He said his minutes have been down because he hasn't earned it. He has earned everything tonight. Boy, twice great blocks without fouling. Second in Kent State school history in blocks, 131 of them now. Unlikely to pass John Edwards for first, but still high up in the books. Moses falling down. No foul, it's Kent State's ball. Well, out of control there by Moses. Spicer with another block. Not what Ball State wanted offensively. Ortiz, chance to make it a nine point game at the line. Well, that's good recognition. They had Ortiz being guarded by 6'2", Niall Smith. Definite mismatch. And now, can Kent State take care of business at the free throw line? 12 of 16. 13 and 17. Marvin Jones coming back in the junior college transfer. And Jalal Cancer, the Cornell transfer, will come back in as well. And he'll actually get Thomas. 
which is an interesting move by Rob Senderoff. Well, you've got the eight minute media timeout coming up shortly, so maybe buy Thomas a little extra rest. One of two for Ortiz. Big possession for Ball State. No surprise, it's House with the dish and Moses the finish. Five second half points for the freshman Trey Moses. When I tell you Franco House, that's his fifth assist, Joel. So he's doing a terrific job when the double teams comes finding the open guy. Good passing big man. Probably doesn't get the credit due for what he's able to do there, Franco House. Edwin a little out of control, and he throws it to his coach. That's the 10th turnover for Kent State. And the ebbs and flows here are incredible because now, again, it's a two-possession game. Well, I'm surprised that that Edwin pass falling out of bounds didn't end up in an open three-point shooter for Kent State. But, you know, here, here it's, it's interesting. We talked to Rob Senderhoff prior to the game about these situations where they've given up leads and they've worked on it in practice. You know, they've tried to stress that, you know, when you've got a six point lead, 10 point lead, you've got to extend it. This exact situation actually was the one he told us. Up six with eight minutes to play against Penn State. Down six with three minutes to play. Up six here with eight minutes to go. Kiapwe. Oh, wow. Franco House through the trees. We'll go to the free throw line. The whipping passes, and the last from Trey Moses was a thing of beauty. Ball State applying the pressure, trying to improve on its near flawless record at home.